a former atheist, wheelchair-bound man who couldn't even eat, has a startling encounter with supernatural healing and all of its physical and spiritual implications, all on this week's Spirit Answers Podcast. Well, he founded Outside the Four Walls Ministry, is the host of the new podcast, Pushing Boundaries, also the author of several books, uh, the most recent one being Pushing the Boundaries in Christ, Living Supernaturally, and has an absolutely miraculous healing testimony to boot. Tony Myers, welcome to Spirit Answers Podcast. Thank you for having me, Alex. It's my pleasure. Um, so we're going to get into some of the things that I just talked about here in a little bit. But before we get into that, uh, you have, as I said, an absolutely miraculous healing testimony. So why don't you go ahead and get us started off with what happened in your testimony? So I'd been an atheist my whole life. And uh, I won't get in, you know, we all basically know that story in the drugs, alcohol, I was more of a militant atheist. If 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 a man would approach me and start talking about Jesus, it would infuriate me and I would jump on him. Um and then in my later years, I'm I'm a army veteran. I spent uh eight years in the military. And so I pretty much I was hardcore. Um very seldom saw a doctor. I've been healthy. When I got out of the military, I became a welder, and that's what I did for a living. And then all of a sudden, things changed. In two, starting 2006, I became what I called death tired. <laughs> I would just wake up from sleeping, and five minutes after waking up, I would be, I couldn't keep my eyes open. So on the way to work, I would literally have to pull off the side of the road and catch a power nap. Not only that, but in 2006, what I also started was I had no appetite. Uh, I would go days without eating. And then when I did eat, I would only eat bites of food. And then from there, it progressed. Well, it was also 2006. I met my future wife, Deb. And I did start to chill out, start to get smoothed over a little bit. She was the first Christian woman that I had ever really had any contact with, which what I told her was, me and God's got problems. Don't talk to me about him. 2008 is when I moved to be with her in Virginia. I lived in Alabama. She lived in Virginia. So in 2008, moved down. As soon as I moved down is when the weaknesses started, started happening. My arms would suddenly get weak. My legs would suddenly get weak. And that developed pretty quickly to where one day I was working. I was holding a piece of steel for my partner to weld. All of a sudden, my arms gave out. Now, thank God that he was very quick and it didn't crush his head. But that right there was when I said, well, I've got to go to the VA and see what's going on. And then then from there, just by the end of 2010, I was in the wheelchair. Actually, yeah, it would have been actually the end of 2009, begin 2010, is when I was in the wheelchair. My fingers stopped working. Essentially, every single part of my body quit working. Couldn't talk. It sounded like mush because I had no, no tongue control whatsoever. 
um, could barely swallow and things got real bad real quick. And now besides that, I had a laundry list. I had back problems. I had the most severe case of emphysema the uh, pulmonologist had ever seen. Um, the list goes on of all the health problems I had, including PTSD, severe PTSD. Um, that list goes on and on. To put it real simple, if it was part of my body, it was affected at the time. There's, <laughs> I don't, I don't know of a body part of mine that was good to go. So that's just a real quick preview of that kind of stuff. Now, starting in 2009, me and my wife did sort of, well, we did attend this church in, from 2009 until 2012 when I was healed. Um, we attended about 12 times because I got so bad that I couldn't be transferred into the vehicle. There were a few times the church we were attending uh, did come and literally picked me up, put me in their van, put the wheelchair in there. Uh, but by the end of, I think, 2010, I was way too far. Um, 2000, yeah, 2010. That was no longer an option. Um, pretty much stayed in the living room, stayed in the wheelchair, no way to transfer myself uh, in 2011. And one thing people don't realize, the diagnosis for Lou Gehrig's disease is a very long haul, even for the best of doctors. And so it wasn't until March 2011 that I was actually diagnosed with ALS. And there's a whole, I'm not even going to get into that medical side of things today. That's always the lesser of the importance. Um, the VA didn't do everything they could. They could have supplied me with a lot more stuff that I found out later. Like a, one of them computers that talk for you. Um, but in my case, that didn't happen. And there were a lot of things that didn't happen, but I'm going to give that to, to the Lord credit because had I received those things, I think I would have been comfortable in just dying because I was, I was already looking to die. I had already given up. And so I think if I would have been given those, if they had been able to transfer me to a bed um, and all that stuff, if they had been able to give me uh, the feeding tube the or intravenous feeding, which I had none of, my stomach stopped completely January 2012. So for five years, I'd... You know, by that time, actually, all they could do is put little drops of insure on my tongue. The speech swallowing therapist uh, said I was getting about 120 calories, which was just sitting in my stomach, and that's about a tablespoon. Wow. So just the fact. And this is something I want people to really, really let it sink in. The Lord was sustaining me while I was still an atheist. Now, like I said, my heart was softening, no doubt. And in 2011, I got baptized in the wheelchair. I did that primarily for my wife's sake. I was still thinking like an atheist. Aunt Red didn't even own a Bible at the time. So my actions, my thoughts were still 
as an atheist, but I was coming around, is the best way to put it. <laughs> and I do say that I accepted Christ the best way I could at the time. And so I don't want to get people too confused on that. But I was baptized. They carried the wheelchair up of 14 stairs into the baptismal. Now, I really had no understanding of any of that. I had no understanding what the representation was or any of that. So, but by the same token, so here I had gone five years with very little sustenance. And then starting January 2012, zero sustenance because my stomach was completely paralyzed by then. Not to mention, I couldn't swallow, which, trust me, that's horrific. You have mucus and everything else built up, and it ain't going nowhere except dripping down all over you. You're choking. It's not a pretty sight. And now I'm going to fast forward, and let's get to the miracle. How's that? That sound good to you, that Alex? That sounds great. Do you have any any questions up to this point? No, no. I really appreciate you you setting the stage for us because I think that it does. The more that we understand just how um, how many things that you were battling here, I think it's going to make the miracle even that much more um, miraculous. So, no, I, I really appreciate everything that you shared. So we're going to go. Oh, let me put this plug in that I always do. So up to this point, I should have already been dead. I should have died from starvation. But nobody's recognizing that because everybody's focused on everything else. So a huge thing is what are we looking at? Because... That was a miracle that I was still alive, that I even made it to 2012, much less July, seven months down the road with zero sustenance. I often hear people say, well, if there's a change, I will recognize it. I beg to differ because I've got proof that's not true. If you're not looking for it, you're not going to see it. You think it'll be obvious, but trust me, if I'm looking behind me and walking forward, I don't see what's coming in front of me, do I? That's right. And so if we're looking at the wrong things, we're not going to see it. And then the thing is, if one person, my wife didn't recognize it, the nurses didn't. The speech swallowing therapist. No one made a mention. Tony, you're a miracle right now. If one person had, my healing very well may have happened sooner. So I, I do always stress that point. Don't take it for granted you would recognize. In fact, I'll tell you, I have seen so many times where someone has not recognized it and I pointed it out to them. Mm -hmm. So now we're going two weeks before my healing. My healing was July 4th on a Wednesday, 2012. So two weeks on a Wednesday, the speech swallowing therapist comes up. He's, <clears throat> he's white as a ghost. He's terrified. And I'm looking at, at him. And by the way, my eyebrows wouldn't even move. They move now. But they wouldn't even move back then. Everything. I, I was literally skin and bones. So he comes in the house. You can see something was going on. And he's like, I saw you walking. 
Now, my thoughts <laughs> were like, dude, you're crazy. I I was actually thinking in cuss words. Um, and I'm like, this dude's out of his ever-loving mind. And did he relay that to you, how he saw you? Was it like a vision or a dream? What what he said was he was pulling in and we've got I've got a long gravel driveway. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he was pulling in. And he said I had a ball cap on, which I never wore ball caps, but um and I was walking to the mailbox. And then he said he glanced away for a second, looked, and I was gone. And that's where he was like, whoa, some, this is something weird now. And that's wow. what made him so terrified. And I don't believe that he was a believer at all. Mm. Um, I, I don't know. It wasn't something we talked about. Uh, I just don't feel like he was a believer. Mm-hmm. Actually, <laughs> get your story straight, Tony. <laughs> that with 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 the uh, speech swallowing therapist. That was the week before. Two weeks before is when I ran the wheelchair down the four lane mm. for about the last six months from <clears throat> from about December. 2011 on all I was consumed with was, was trying to figure out how to kill myself I wanted it to be over for myself and for my wife and you know I was in severe depression I had flashbacks of stuff I was not a mentally sane person at all um and so I just wanted it over. My wife, her phys her her medical status wasn't too good because she was destroying her body trying to take care of me. And in fact, early on she had to have a shoulder surgery from lifting the wheelchair. She had a frozen frozen shoulder and she had to have surgery. Here I am in the wheelchair. No one to take care of both of us. So it was a difficult situation. So she left to go grocery shopping for herself. And I took my wheelchair trying to get a car to run over me down, down Highway 58. No one had a bad day. They just swerved around me. The big old massive motorized wheelchair that weighed 400 pounds. And they did go slow. Um, and so the cars would just swerve around. Stayed out there about 45 minutes and then gave up. So then. Uh, now we're going to July 4th. I wake up. Still try and figure out, you know, when your hands are like this and you can't lift up your arms, you know, your stomach's not working. So I couldn't, I couldn't poison myself, couldn't stab myself, couldn't sh <coughs> shoot myself. I would just go over and over. All right, how do I get this thing over with? And then it was 1.45. I looked at the clock. It was 1.45. The thought went through my mind. Jesus suffered far more in one day than I've suffered this whole time. Now, at first, I engaged my memory, my imagination. I just, my thoughts just went to the, the whipping post. And then all of a sudden, it was as if I was there. <laughs> if you 
if you imagine a hologram, that's what it looked like. Wow. And so I am seeing the Roman soldier with a demonic fury. And I would tell you personally, I believe that, and, and one, the Romans weren't under the Jewish custom and the Jewish laws. It was the Jews that had the law 39 lashes. Okay. Jesus was whipped by the Romans. They weren't under the 39 lashes. What they would do was have you just able enough to carry your cross, to carry your own cross. So they would take you to the brink. What I saw was this soldier was taking their cat and nine tails and literally with a fury lashing him it would wrap around his front and it would rip off the front first <clears throat> and you would see chunks of meat flying through the air flesh that was being ripped off you would see the blood just splattering horrific if, if you imagine it was reverse raindrops. The whip would come open it up and the blood was splattering out along with the flesh. Jesus was standing in a pool of blood. And then it, the, the cat nine tails would go take the flesh off the back. Even me being as violent of a person I had been and seen some things I'd seen, there is no comparison. Now, after my healing, the first verse I read was Psalms 22, where it says, I can tell on my bones. And that's exactly what I saw. Jesus looking down and he could see his chest bones, literally see his chest bones. Wow. Then the scene switched to Jesus being on the cross. Here, once again, you see the depiction that the cross was this big old thing <laughs> way up in the air and all that. And that's not true. Um, the cross itself Jesus' feet would have only been about a foot, two feet off of the ground. Okay, this, the cross was no big monstrous thing. He, would, he was... Now, here I am sitting in the wheelchair, which at the time... It was as if I was standing, and I really can't explain that because I knew I was still in the wheelchair. But it was like as if I was right in front of him. And so my observation of it was his, his head would have been just right above mine. He did not look human. All except his eyes. <clears throat> My gaze, our gaze is locked. And I saw such a love in his eyes. A peace came over me I'd never felt before. I'd never been in peace. Um, it was, in the best way, liquid gold is the best way I know how to describe it, even though I've never had liquid gold, but <laughs> it sounds right, okay? <laughs> yeah, sure. And so, but it was an immense piece. And then that's when, and when I say I said, I really mean 
it was my my speech was still slush it was more of thinking um and i honestly you know i couldn't i could not swear to whether did i speak it out was my voice clear at this time i don't know but i said jesus loves me jesus loves me jesus loves me why i said that i know now that was the holy spirit i did not even know who the holy spirit was back then but then i said back pain leave and i said that three times and then i said in the name of jesus three times and all of a sudden the back pain i'd been plagued with for over 25 30 years was gone wow and then i just you know my my hands are like this i'm still in the wheel i'm my my arms are still on the armrest of the wheelchair and then i just i just say fingers move and my fingers start moving that's where I took the wheelchair <clears throat> it wouldn't fit in the bedroom which is why i stayed in the living room and so i was right there at the threshold in the hallway and i'm doing this to my wife her eyes got real big i tried to say if jesus is willing i'll be back walking so go back to the living room park the wheelchair in the same corner and then i just said legs move both legs hit the floor i said jesus don't let me fall and i started walking to the bedroom Absolutely now my wife incredible. says i look like frankenstein now from what i remember my arms at this point so when i got up my arms were still like they'd been in the wheelchair it was about the time i got to the bedroom that all of a sudden i could start lifting my arms up wow and then my speech cleared up and then um that's when everything started functioning i let the dogs outside for the first time and it was as if the door had shrunk um the doorknob had moved i was relearning everything having an adult mind but it it was really like a child just relearning everything everything was brand new um and then we decided the church since it was july 4th was having a worship service in a strip mall parking lot and so we're like we we had had no plans on going we're like let's go and so we went there i drove now here's here's the funny little thing is my wife's like you ain't driven in four years i'm like i'm driving and <laughs> She's like, I don't care. We can get in a wreck. It don't matter. You're healed. All right, fine. You drive. Got us there safely. Yvonne, who was the uh, business manager for the church, because we got there quite early. And um, Yvonne turned around. She saw Dev get out of the passenger side. Well, it wasn't quite dawning on her. I was getting out of the driver's side. Then all of a sudden it hit her and she's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so then, and there's footage of me walking in the parking lot, bending over and doing all that. Um, somebody, uh, well, I think it was Yvonne had filmed that. Uh, and then 
what happened? I ate my first meal. Uh, she came up to me and my wife and said, Tony, can you eat? And I said, I don't know. My stomach's like burning. It's like on fire. Remember, it'd been over six years since I'd been hungry. I had no clue what it was. <laughs> it never dawned on me. And at the same time, my wife and Yavambo said, you're hungry. And she's like, we've got time. We're going to take you to Cracker Barrel. And so we went to Cracker Barrel. I had country fried steak. I finished it all. Now, the next day, the home health care nurse said, that proves it was God because you should have been dead with the first bite. Wow. Because your body should have gone into shock and you should you should have collapsed and died right there. And so uh, I ate the whole thing. And then afterwards, we went back to the worship service. <laughs> I started praying for people right then. And by that time, word had gone around and there what had been just a few people there were over a thousand people that showed up and this is a small area. Um, but so just everybody had come across. I, I was just saying that like I was healed. You're healed. Now get up. And it was that day I bought my first Bible and after I gave my testimony and all, then when we went home, I started reading and started studying. And that's a real quick summary of it all. Absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely beautiful. And uh, just shows you what an incredible God we serve. I was just filled with this peace I had never felt before. Mm. With this love I had never felt before. And so... That's that's pretty much the extent was in here. I knew Jesus loved me. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had people ask me, before, well, at that point, did you repent of it? No, that, that, that thought never crossed my mind. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of stuff. Um, and I, I will add to that. And I'm trying to think the name of it. it um, when I was in the military, I was diagnosed as being a schizoid, mm -hmm, which means mm -hmm. lack of emotion. It's pretty much a hermit, um, totally uncaring and all of that. And... So you can imagine how overwhelmed I was. I had never, that I'm aware of, really, really felt loved or loved until that moment. Wow. Wow. To kind of put it all in perspective, mm -hmm. I was, prior to that, I was a very uncaring, aloof person. Yeah, that really had a, a huge effect on you then. That, oh, that yeah. feeling of unconditional love, and 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 I appreciate you pointing out what you did too, because it wasn't like you had some, you know, fanatical, fantastic relationship yet with Jesus. You were still. It sounds like your heart was open to this. You were still searching, but it wasn't like you were um, out there preaching on Sundays. You, you right. were super, Mr. Super Christian. Right. Exactly. Hmm. Um. I would say my heart was open or softened. Mm -hmm. I think is probably a good way to explain it. I was, you know, at least open to it for the first time in my life. Yeah. Whereas yeah. prior to that, anybody mentioned Jesus, it was a shutdown very mm -hmm. rapidly. And as it relates to that vision, I think that's really fascinating obviously because the because of the vision itself but because not everybody that has a miraculous healing has the opportunity to see 
uh, a vision like that, you know, Jesus on the cross, uh, what a humbling, humbling experience that had to have been. And, and at the same time, like you said, you felt that peace that you never felt before, that un unconditional love. What, why do you think it is that you were given that opportunity? Personally, I think the Lord had to drop a whole bunch of bricks on my hard head. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and one thing I have found is because my parents tried to raise me as Roman Catholic, which from eight years old on, I wouldn't even go to church. Um, I would disappear. I would... Um, I hated anything to do with God. Mm. Um, but I do find, and I think a lot of this is the way Catholics are brought up, young children as Catholics, and the way um, <clears throat> that many young children, including myself, saw God as being harsh and uncaring and all of that. And so I think that's why a lot of us that walk away at a very young age from religion and turn into atheists or agnostics or whatever, the Lord, the Holy Spirit knows what each individual needs, but I find that it's that type of personality that often experiences the visions or what have you, because that's what they need to bust through um, all of the hurt and everything else. Mm hmm. And I agree with that. I think we see that time and time again, too, on this show, not even as it relates to miraculous healings, but the Lord meeting us exactly where we're at, giving us exactly what we need at the exact right time. He knows us better than we know ourselves, and he knows exactly what it is that we need uh, in order to to turn to him. And um, and he's not going to to beat us over the head with a Bible, so to speak, but he'll he'll show us what we need at the exact right time. And it sounds like for you, that's that's what you needed. And there was not only just for yourself, but I think a lot of times too, something that's underplayed in these particular miraculous uh, occurrences is that, you know, God knows the, he knows the beginning and he knows the end. And I think he knows the people that are, that are going to go out and, and share their testimony and spread the truth. And I think he saw that in you, he saw what you were going to do uh, with this experience and with this healing. He knew you weren't just going to keep it to yourself. You're going to go out and shout it from the rooftops. But I don't believe that has bearing on, because uh, I believe personally, the Holy Spirit's always trying to lead everyone to their healing. Mm -hmm. Now, part of my testimony, because there's so much, you know, obviously, uh, that's left out. But one thing was, there were four times that I had the thought, you're healed, now get up and walk. Now, each time, I rejected the thought. Mm. And once again, you're talking about somebody who hadn't read scriptures and had no clue who the Holy Spirit was. But, um, you know, my response each time was, you're stupid. You're an idiot. Why are you even thinking that? You're paralyzed. <laughs> Mix that man with some cuss words. And that would have been what, what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and that happened three or four times. And I would say it probably happened more than that. Mm -hmm. the, the, the biggest... See, I do believe the Holy Spirit's always trying to lead a person to healing but it's whether we pick up on it or not. Mm. Just mm. like with the food, with recognizing the miracle, the Lord was sustaining me throughout this whole time. 
you know, we don't recognize it. And in fact, it wasn't until I was writing The Lord Jesus Sealed Me that I really understood that it really had an impact on me how much of a miracle it was. Hmm. Even directly after my healing, didn't really think about that part of it much. It wasn't until I started writing the book and reliving that, that it was like, wait a minute. Now this, that was huge. But so I don't think, and I really do believe this, the Lord is no respecter of person. So he's not making decisions based upon what your actions may or may not be in the future. We tend to think of it, all right, he knows the past, he knows the future, and all of this. And so we kind of second guess everything from the way, from our human perspective. And I don't believe that's God's perspective. So he gave you the, the vision, in other words, just because he knew exactly what you needed, not necessarily because it was going to help further the Not because I was somebody so mm -hmm. special, or he had, you know, every one of us are special to him. Mm -hmm. Every single one of us. And yes, there are people that get healed from things, and they do keep it to themselves. But once again, our God is so much bigger than that. Mm -hmm. And so um, we don't want to bring too much of our human perspective into it. Hmm. Well said. Um, I also, I th and I want to highlight too, what you were saying, and you've said a few times as it relates to noticing the, the things that God was doing. And I think that this extends outside of just healing. I think there's a lot mm -hmm. of times that we take for granted the times that God is doing things in our lives and the way that he's communicating with us. and and and. I think that he is communicating with us every day. I, just about every moment, moment of every day, it's just a matter of having that awareness. And and uh, so I appreciate the lens that you speak through right now as it relates to healing and noticing maybe some of these, even if it's not the big miraculous thing that we're that we've been praying for. Some of these things along the way, I think that sometimes we lose sight of during our day to day life. When when you really look at my healing, what it was was okay. The back pain first, the fingers moving, my legs moving. It was a bunch of stepping stones mm -hmm. in a condensed period of time, <laughs> three or four minutes. But that's really what it is, is one thing led to another. And it was that that developed an expectation within me, within my heart, my innermost man, not here. This, forget about that. It's here. It's, and that was something, was I aware that was an expectation? No, not consciously at all. Can I look back and know I was an expectation in my innermost being? Yes. And that expectation, unknown to me, came about because of the vision. Hmm. Wow. Whereas before, I denied my own healing without realizing it. And that's why I tell my story, and that's why I tell those times, because so many times we deny our own healing, hmm. and we have no clue we're doing it. Um, also, getting back to uh, when you start to speak over yourself that you know, certain parts of your body to be healed. What do you make of that? Do you think that was God speaking through you? Or do you think that was you based off of what you had seen in the vision, starting to declare those things uh, through through God? How, how much of God do you think that was? I think that was the Holy Spirit. Yes, because I at that time, I really wasn't thinking per se. I really do not remember having any real thoughts per se. Mm -hmm. And so, and it wasn't, a, you know, the Holy Spirit doesn't take you over. 
Right. You know, um, but yes, that was just me. So men to the Holy Spirit without realizing it, without knowing it. I couldn't express why at the time I was saying those things. Mm -hmm. If you was a Tony, hold up. Why are you saying that? I'd be like, don't know. <laughs> and so, you know, and I think a lot of people do that without realizing it. And that's when things work out perfect because that's the Holy Spirit working through us. Yeah. And you're, and again, you're not the only one I've heard. I've heard of other people, the same thing. They'll blurt something out that could not have been them. And it's from the Holy Spirit. It's happened to me as well. And like you said, it's not the Holy Spirit taking over us, possessing us, anything like that. It's not that dramatic. It's something very quick, but it's exactly, again, we talk about exactly what we need at the exact right time. And I think just another way that God can communicate with us when he, you know, in, in his perfect timing and in, in, in his perfect way. And um, uh, I'll, go, I'll go ahead. <laughs> I hate that perfect timing de deal. Go ahead. Yeah, ex explain um, explain wh uh, why that is. Be because and you know I covered it a little bit. Sure. Um, you know, I could have been healed at any time. His timing, where it concerns healing, where it concerns salvation, was two thousand years ago. Hmm. Just healing and salvation are one and the same. Healing is part of the salvation package. So there is no difference. What applies to healing applies. What applies to salvation applies to healing. What applies to healing applies to salvation. Mm -hmm. Salvation is a choice. And so when we make the choice, that's when it happens. Hmm. Yeah, and, and his oh, timing was two thousand years ago, when Jesus was on the cross, gave himself up, and then was resurrected. Yeah. So we we get that, and that hurts people because we're waiting on God. Okay, Abraham, really, <laughs> when it comes to Isaac, once again. God was more or less waiting on Abraham and Sarah to come into belief. Mm -hmm. And with healing, it's the same way. Mm -hmm. Is we aren't waiting on him. He's waiting on us. He's mm -hmm. already stamped it. He's already given that stamp. It's already approved. Mm-hmm. There, we always have our healing available. And one thing I say is, you already have your healing because the Holy Spirit's in you. Mm -hmm. Romans 8, 11, and this is my paraphrase, and he's giving life to your body. Mm -hmm. Now, all we have to do is recognize it, but it is always available. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it, I agree with you 100%. I th you're right. It, it all happened at the on the cross. And I think that maybe more along the lines of what I was speaking to is that, and, I, and, I, and actually, and I a hundred percent agree with you as well. I think God is the one who's waiting for us to, uh, to accept him or pr to pursue him. I just think there are certain times when, when we get to that point that God will provide certain things like your, your vision, for example, that I think again, that he know that I think, and he just understands that that's, going to be helpful for us in that relationship. And he, he's like you said, no respecter of men. So he gives us, I, I, I feel like exactly what we need when we need it, when we're ready to pursue him and embrace him. I think that's more along the lines of what I was thinking. There. Right. So, and that I can agree with. Yeah. Um, and I don't think he, he holds back until he knows we're ready. I don't think he even does that. And once again, that's based upon my journey. You know, hey, he's the one that put the thought in my head. You're healed. Get up. Yeah. Now, and and this is why 
I try not to engage too much with second guessing God the Father because he's the one that is all knowing. So we're not all knowing, but he is. So, but I don't think he holds back. Mm -hmm. I think throughout the whole time, and I can look back on what I went through even though I was an atheist for most of it, there are still many, many things I can point to that he was involved in, even though I wasn't ready for it, obviously. So I don't think he holds anything back with us. Hmm. I I mean, that's sincere. That's from my heart. I don't think he does. I, I also want to highlight some of the other healings that you've been involved with as well, because it's not just your healing, um, which is absolutely miraculous, as I've said, but there have been a few others that uh, either you've been involved with directly, or I know that you have heard about. And so I want to give you an opportunity. Can you please share some of, some of your favorite uh, healing moments with us? Oh my gosh. Um, I've seen three people resurrected from the dead. Wow. Um, one was actually, well, two, two, wait a minute, maybe there's four. (laughs) There was one that this, this woman is in the emergency room. Her son, uh, had stopped breathing. He had been dead. The doctor was in the process, and I heard the nurse and the doctor telling this woman, ma'am, your son is being pronounced dead right now. So his heart and all that stuff had stopped for like 15, 20 minutes. She was standing right there. She called me. So I know it was a gif because I was hearing the doctors talk and all. And I'm there speaking life. And then all of a sudden, I hear the doctor say, this is impossible. We've got a heartbeat. And we've got brain function. And he was brought back from the dead. Wow. Uh, So, and then there, there were other cases of that but another cool one was this fella he actually his his legs were amputated and I was asked to pray for him for phantom pain and I'm trying not to get this church too involved because it's kind of a sad ending. But um, the pastor of this church had asked me to pray over this fellow for phantom pain. And I'm like, why am I praying for phantom pain? Why why am I praying that the leg grow back? And so he's got prosthetic on. And I'm like, dude, take that prosthetic off because your leg's going to come back. And he's like, well, in order to get it off, I got to go in the bathroom. And I'm like, go in the bathroom then. I got time. I ain't worried about it. And so I'm there waiting. All of a sudden, I think I was talking to other people. All of a sudden, I hear, Tony, Tony. And I'm looking around, and there this fella is with the prosthetic in his arms. He's holding his prosthetic, and he's walking normally. Wow. He can't even describe exactly when the leg grew back. And wow. that that happens often. People don't realize that does. You can't pinpoint the moment of healing a lot of times. Mm. So that in itself is an unusual. Um all he knew, he had taken the prosthetic off, and it was just like he just stood up normally, and then he looked down, and he's got a leg. 
well, the the bad part of this story, I'm like, look, you need to show everybody this. We walk up to the front. The pastor and all the elders of their church literally turned their backs on me and him. And I mean, literally would not hear it at all. We turned around, we left. Um, and I'm not one, I'm not going to assume too much. <laughs> but one thing that happened, we're both angry. The fact he wasn't allowed to give his testimony and what an awesome testimony. No kidding. Um, but I look, uh, it was like we walked out the, the door. I was looking for my car or whatever. And then I went to say something to him and he was gone and he wasn't nowhere in the parking lot or anything. Always could have been an angel. Could have been. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, but that was just a very interesting ending that I don't know the answer to. <laughs> wow. 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 Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That is fascinating. And I don't, you're, I'm right there with you. It could have been an angel. So it's really hard to say. Uh, I mean, you know, it's certainly a possibility. Yeah. Um, but just, that he would disappear. Yeah. Um, there's been so many healing over the phone. There's always a lot, lots of healings. Um, there was a woman, her arm, she had her hand and everything, but her arm was only 10 inches long. Mm. And now did end up with a hand. I prayed for her. And her arm just shot out. It went zip, 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 zip. Wow. Um, that was another cool one. Uh, you know, there's just <laughs> um, so many of them. A fella that had rods in his back to where he could not bend at all. And I just spoke over him. And most time I don't even pray. Most time I'm like, here, lift this up or bend over. Mm. Now, damn, I was just like, bend over. And he bend over. He's like, dude, I can't bend over. I'm like, you're bent over now. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> the shock of it all is beautiful. Um, there was an elderly man and his wife. His wife was on oxygen. He had uh, a cane. He had, had a lot of difficulty walking, knee problems, back problems, all that. I just told him to get up out of the vehicle and start dancing. And it was so beautiful because literally he did just that. Hmm. I mean, he started dancing in the parking lot right outside of a clinic. And he's taking his cane, waving it up in the air and just worshiping the Lord. Meanwhile, mm. I'm over praying for his wife <laughs> and speaking life for her lungs. And um, she takes oxygen off. She's doing great. But watching that fella, that's where <laughs> is really touching. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, and, you and name I, it. I mean, just but see, the focus of my ministry is to show people they already have what they need to be healed mm -hmm. right where they're at. They don't need Tony. They don't need anyone else to pray for him. The woman with the issue of blood shows us. So does Paul with the poisonous snake. We have the Holy Spirit inside of us. He's the one given life. Now, there's absolutely, as I just said, I pray for people all day long, every day. There's nothing wrong 
with praying for people and nothing wrong with asking for prayer. I want to make that perfectly clear. But at the same time, you are equipped to see the healing of yourself for yourself. And that's where my main focus is because we get the body of Christ healthy and get us being truly a peculiar people because we're still healthy. Then we're going to change the world. Hmm. And so that's where the focus of my ministry is, even though hey, I don't hesitate to pray over people. Yeah. It, why do you think that is then? Uh, why are there so many miraculous things happening around us? Not just healings, but that's certainly a big part of it. And there are still many people, obviously outside of the, of, of the body of Christ, but inside as well, that deny these things. Why do you think that is? Because of what they've been taught and what they've heard and what they see. Um, for, for so long, and, you know, basically, the entire world has been coming out of religion. You know, religion took took hold of the church and of the world really as early back as of uh, three as well i want to say actually 225 AD is when religion in the negative sense started grabbing a hold of things and then as things become structured into religion more and more of a form then you have the roman catholic church that was essentially the one world religion for th a thousand years so we're coming out of religion where you just believe what you're told and that mm -hmm. has happened so many times people put their trust in leadership that are looking at it from a humanistic perspective and not from God's perspective. Hmm. Just like I made the statement earlier that people will semi-believe in healing, say, well, God is a healer and he will heal, but, you know, that's icing on the cake. No, it's not. It's a staple. It's the children's bread. We're all his children now. It is, would, would a father deny his son nutrition? No. Jesus compared healing to bread. And bread was a part of every single meal. It was a staple, not luxury. Yeah. Yeah, 100% agree with you. Because we walk by sight. That's why people don't believe. And, and that goes hand in hand with, with my next question, which was, what do you think is the the thing that is getting in the way for, for, for more miraculous healings? Because you have people that I know are asking, well, what what is it that I need to be doing? Is it more prayer? Is it more persistent prayer? Do I need more, more faith? But... It, it sounds like, just like I always say, as it relates to the Bible, I believe it's the most the most simple answer is is the accurate one. I think that a lot of times human human wisdom can make things more complicated than what than what God had intended for it to be. And so it sounds like you're saying just living less by sight and more living by what God has already given us. Yes, and I put I put it another way: it's a change in perspective. Quit trying to get healed. And have your healing. Recognize the healing is already within you in the form of the Holy Spirit. He is giving life to our bodies. Since he is giving life to our bodies, there has to be a change. Hmm. And I do, especially in unlocking the mystery of divine healing and in DIY, um, 
I talk a lot about the brain, the soul, and the spirit connection. Most people work from the physical senses to the soul. We let what we see in our eyes, what we see, we don't have a decision to make. So what turns out is we're in pain. So instead of us, the soul making a decision, because the body's a vehicle, it does nothing on its own. The brain is the control center for the vehicle. We are the ones that are supposed to feed into the brain, and that's the brain is subject to us. We are not subject to the brain hmm. with a car. The car is subject to me. The car does not tell me when I could when when and what direction to go. I tell the car. Same deal. But because we believe what we see, taste, touch, hear, and smell, we don't think we have a choice. So it's exactly as that's the perspective we have to change. Instead of letting our brain feed our soul, we need the Holy Spirit to feed our soul. And then our soul is feeding our brain the information. You're ill. Yeah, beautifully stated. Um, what are you up to now? Because as I mentioned before, you have just come out with a new podcast on uh, CPN. And I know you came out with a book last year. Uh, and you have a YouTube channel. And we'll show everybody where they can find you. But uh, what are you working on now? And do you what are you working on here in the near future? Working on a whole bunch of stuff at one time. <laughs> Um, as you mentioned, Pushing Boundaries, Living Supernaturally podcast, doing the YouTube channel, which I, I've actually now, I'm releasing videos on Wednesdays and Thursdays. I have live streams on Mondays and Tuesdays, uh, all throughout Facebook and on YouTube. It's Monday Night Live. Most time it's me teaching. Then Tuesdays is called Two Bros Plus Jesus. Um, that's what with he really he's not a blood brother, but he really is. <laughs> We're that close. Um, and the way we met, he was he was walking towards me, and I did not know him from Adam at the time. We did a turn. Uh, I had just started going to this church. And so he looked familiar, but we hadn't said two words to each other. Um, so I see this big six foot something fellow coming at me. And the Lord gave me a word of knowledge. And what ended up, I smacked him upside the back of the head. And I said, all your allergies, blah, blah, blah. All that sealed right now. I mean, I literally hit him hard on the back of the head. And <laughs> so, and then it was the next day. He had severe allergies. He had never smelled. Since he was a baby, he had never smelled anything. Every morning, his eyes would be swollen shut with crust and everything else. In fact, he couldn't even open up his eyes the whole way. Um, it, it was terrible. And uh, he was healed from it like that. We've been best friends ever since. Uh, wow. And so, anyhow, that's Tuesday nights. Uh, and and here's, here's another big one. And plus, I'm working on three books. They're all different topics. Um, at the same time. And then the thing I'm really excited about is I'm teamed up. We actually have a team of screenwriter 
and two producers, uh, Kevin and Amber Camp, their husband and wife team, and uh, Taylor, he's the screenwriter. And so we're coming up with a movie about my healing. Wow. Congratulations. Uh, and so check out my website for more details. And I'll be honest, it costs money. <laughs> now, we've got a good plan and all, but if someone feels led, then just go to my website and just write down movie, and that's what it'll go for. Mm -hmm. um, we're really trying to come up. We've got to come up with $20,000 to finish the script. And this is not going to be your typical, shall I say, the cheesy Christian movie, because so many Christian movies are cheesy. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually going to be a supernatural thriller. Wow. And the the way because we want everyone my story can touch atheists can touch just anyone and so we wanted to do it in a way that would attract anyone mm -hmm. and so um it's gonna be a very exciting uh, but i mean so much of what really happened is in there. Hmm. And so if you wouldn't want to partner with us on it and feel led to, that'd be awesome. Yeah. And I love that you're doing, doing it that way. I always say that we need more uh, Christian uh, types of entertainment out there trying to reach more people and meeting them where they're at, because we get so much of the other, we get so much of the reverse of the world in entertainment. So right. uh, I really appreciate that you're, you're doing it from that perspective. Um, I also want to give people an opportunity. Again, we'll put this like we do every week in the links below, wherever you're listening or watching, give people an opportunity to see uh, your, your latest book, Pushing the Boundaries in Christ, Living Supernaturally. Um, and he, he uh, will include in the description uh, Tony's Amazon author page so you can see all the books that he's written over the last few years. Um, and also, uh, before we go, Oh yeah, we 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 mentioned the website, but I want to make sure people know where they can find you. So it's just TonyBelieves.com. Um, and want before you go as well, I want you to be able to pray us out in prayer. Um, but before we do that, I think I would be remiss, and I'm sure you get this all the time. Uh, what is going on with the blue beard and hair? <laughs> <laughs> so when I went to three days before. I published the second book, Unlocking the Mystery of Divine Healing. I started getting these dreams. It was the same th dream three days in a row. And like I said, it was right before I published it. It was, I was at a conference teaching healing, which I was doing back then. And this was 2016, 17, right around there. Um, I was I was teaching healing, and then at the end, this old man walked up to me and said, "Where the color you're healing?" So I had this dream three nights in a row. Now I knew healing. The prophetic color is blue. I already knew that. But I've got tattoos that are blue. I wear blue shirts all the time. I'm thinking, all right, I am wearing the color of my healing. So this is just me with this dream. Mm -hmm. Then I go get my hair cut. And Liz had been doing my hair since my healing. She, We didn't know each other while I was paralyzed, but after after I was healed, I started going to Liz. And she turned around. And she was cutting my hair. And she said, Tony, where's the color you're healing? And I'm like, huh? What did you just say? 
And she said, I don't know why I said it, Tony, but wear the color of your eel. Her eyes got real big. And then she turns me around. And one of her stylists had blue hair. And wow. I'm like, no way. I never thought about dyeing my hair at all. Um, and she's like, I'll do it right now. And I'm like, no. I walk, I walk in the house with blue hair. My wife be throwing pans at me and stuff. No way. I got to talk. I hadn't even told her about the dream. But it was then that I knew. And so went home, talked it over. Then the next day, went back, been blue ever since. Wow. And it I, is I really, that. people, it's amazing, really, because since my hair has been blue, I no longer have to walk up to people while I'm out and about. They walk up to me, and they're mm -hmm. like, hey, I love your blue hair. And perfect time to minister to them. Wow. That is that is so beautiful. Uh, okay, yeah, if you, if you could please go ahead and, and uh, pray us out, I, I would really appreciate that. I speak that the Holy Spirit is flowing. He is the rivers of living water, and he's flowing through each and every individual's body as we speak right now, healing everything that he's touching, hearts, livers, pancreases, kidneys right now. An older gentleman with graying hair that wears glasses, their steel frames, gray, uh, you are healed right now. You, you you are on uh, dialysis. And I'm speaking, your kidneys are healed right now. Thank you, Jesus. I speak that that port supernaturally closes up. Thank you, Jesus. Um, eyesight, anything, any health condition right now is being healed. He is flowing through your body. I speak life, life, life. Mary Lou, in Jesus' name, I speak. Your heart is beating the way it should be functioning, the way it should be. The heart murmur is no more. The valves are closing. Thank you, Jesus. I speak right now, every person, get up, move around. Is your body more comfortable? Quit looking for the pain. Is your body more comfortable? Thank you, Jesus. Are your muscles stronger? Thank you, Jesus. Be blessed, be healed, and be a blessing. Thank you. Praise Jesus. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much, for, Tony, for coming on and, and sharing your incredible testimony uh, and your insights with us. I've really, really enjoyed this. Oh, thank you. You are welcome. That's it for this week, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for sharing this with a friend or with several people because I think these are the exact types of testimonies that will get the attention of those outside of the body of Christ. And that's not to say that uh, the, the paranormal or supernatural or near-death experience testimonies that we featured so far don't get those, uh, those people's attention. But I think that these in particular healing testimonies are powerful. And sometimes I think that we don't do enough to highlight them in, in the, the body of Christ. And um, I'm looking forward to sharing a few more interviews as it relates to radical healings with you here over the next several weeks on this podcast. And if you have your own miraculous healing testimony or perhaps a new age to Jesus testimony or near death experience testimony or whatever um, radical testimony that you have, I'd love to hear from you. Love to have you on the show. Keep in mind we have an audio only option as well if you don't want to be on camera. Just send your testimony or video testimony to spiritanswerspodcast at gmail.com 
or feel free to recommend me a testimony of somebody that you would like to have on the show and I'll do what I can to try to get them on and you can do that either by leaving a comment in the comments below if you're watching this or uh, by email or uh, post a video in or uh, testimony in our group Spirit Answers on Facebook. Love to hear from you. Um, and uh, just a reminder as well, if you feel led, there is a link below wherever you're listening to this that you can donate to the podcast and uh, really appreciate that. Everything that you donate will go directly back into the podcast, uh, whether that's monetarily or from a time perspective. Uh, this podcast takes a lot of time, uh, a lot of um, takes a lot of uh, money as well. Just money because I sacrifice time that I could be spent uh, working uh, for my actual job or working on my actual job to do this podcast. Uh, so I love to do it. And I really appreciate if you feel led your donations and uh, just all you do to support the podcast, whatever that is, even if you're just watching, that's, that's, I couldn't do this without you if you're listening. Um, so thank you for all the ways you support us. And that is all I have for you this week. As always, I will be praying for you. I hope you have a fantastic week. See you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.